Welcome to Character Select. My name is Dave, and with me is me third. Hi, hi. This We're in is Glitch, Glitch City. City, a city that shouldn't exist. A tax haven where corporations and criminal empires reign supreme. In this place, all human life has been infected with nano machines to keep them in check. Over them stand the White Knights, who ensure that the corporation's laws are obeyed. Here, brutality in all its forms is an everyday reality. The quality of life for the non-powerful decreases at an alarming rate. Welcome to Cyberpunk City. So for many, this can be overwhelming. Some devote themselves to their jobs, their families, or even their studies. Some look for ways to escape this place, and others just give up. But for many of them, the answer lies at the bottom of a glass. Yep, yep. Cyberpunk City. Mm-hmm. Welcome to Blade on Runner. <laughs> on a small road just seconds away from the main street, somewhere near the slums, you can find the Hall A of BTC's... Bleh, that's a mouthful. So we just call it Valhalla. A small oasis in the middle of the concrete desert. A fountain of spirits waiting for tired souls. And it's here where this story unfolds. Welcome to Cyberpunk Bartender Action Valhalla. You mean V A L L Hall V A V A one one Hall A. Right. So, third has been jonesing to play this game basically for the last two years. Yeah, and it's it hasn't happened. And now I, I I'm played playing through it. like the first two chapters of it. And I'm like, I want to play this for characters. <laughs> so here we I are. And then Dave comes in and says, I'm going to play this for character select. Excuse me. I said, <laughs> who's playing this? And you said, I've been playing a lot of the games lately, so you can do it if you want. And I was like, all right. Never give up the So, so you can do it if you want. I mean, uh, <laughs> this game is best played getting comfortable. Grab some drinks, some snacks, and enjoy. Sit back and relax. We hope you have a good time. Okay. That's like... The most interesting welcome thing that I've seen. That's that's cool. Okay. Uh, psst. Hey, over here. Uh. Oh. How's that for an entrance? Da da da. Come on, Joe. Look sharp. The game's starting, and the player needs a good first impression of its main character. Oh boy, it's that kind of game. Great. I know you served a bunch of tuxedo-clad corgis over the weekend, and the bar will eventually close. Oh no! And I'll admit my little prank on you might have gone a bit overboard. But remember, life is 90% how you take it. Take it. Uh, stay focused and look for the look at the brighter side of things. Blah 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 blah. <laughs> Tongue. I have no idea what the brighter side is, but you should totally find it. In any case, you should totally check out that parcel you just got. See ya! Whoop. What just happened? Did you break the game? Oh. Oh. <sighs> just a dream. Hmm? There's something near the door. Chapter 1. Primera. I have no idea what this game is. Like, I've seen screenshots and stuff. And I know that it's basically about serving drinks to people, but that's basically that's it. That's not really what it's about. Yeah, that's that's what I've heard. So, uh, you your membership. To, yeah, good morning. Uh, your membership to Shining Fingered will automatically renew on the seventeenth. Make sure your account is at least eight hundred dollars by then. Make sure to save your data using the Life Backup app. You can now browse the augmented eye. You just threw like four fucking things at me in three sentences. Jesus yep. Christ, boss and me. Okay. Oh, so this is the phone. So yeah, who is that letter from? Unlock. Oh, so who is that letter from? Nobody. Uh, four, by the way, is the cat. Your okay. cat can talk to you. All right, so I guess I'm looking at my phone. Oh, hold this. Well, uh, I got a thing here. I meant to die. Mass emigration continues as Wonderlanders are the newest threat. Cyborg in Heels returns next year. With inflation rates among the highest in the world, constant shortages of basic groceries, and uh, rampant violent crime. Glitch City citizens look for a better life in other countries. Quincy, however, isn't happy with this. They learn in our schools and universities, but they apply what they learn somewhere else, and I find it rather insulting. 
This comes after revealing new economic measures for the city, which most analysts consider to be useless for the current environment. They don't know shit, including Clancy. Uh, I wonder what Alma thinks of this whole thing. If you thought- If you thought Alice Rabbit was good at cracking the most complicated security protocols in the world, then this new group will certainly blow your mind. They've yet to make an impact as big as Alice Rabbit, but they seem to be aiming very high with recent threats issued against Prime Minister Quincy. We hold full access to Quincy's email network and will release the whole database this January, the group declared during a stream. Shallow threats. When questioned, Prime Minister, Qu Prime Minister Quincy dismissed all of the group's threats by stating he's not hiding anything and is not afraid of a possible leak of his email history. Maybe everyone will see what kind of uh, TV I bought last month. The people behind the Wonderlanders seem to enjoy dressing in all kind of rabbit cost costumes. Costumes? I, I typo. During the stream, from Anthro to Bunny Girl, the purpose was to show the love and respect they have for Alice Rabbit and their role in today's politics. We want, we want to follow their example while having some fun. We're not sure if this will go anywhere, but we'll be there to tell you if it does. Okay. Cyborgs and Heels turns next year to the Super Silver Thunderdome. The popular show Cyborg and Heels returns to the dome this March with tickets going on sale in January. Blah, blah, blah. His acting Master is unnatural. Stage show I don't about care what he thinks. Cyborg fighting terrorism while white wearing heels? That's not a blah, blah, blah. Sorry. Uh, director Quentin Hader explains Cyborg and Heels <laughs> special appeal during an exclusive interview. What's not to love? It's a cyborg wearing heels, cutting stuff. That's literally something we've never seen before in a niche market I'm willing to capitalize on. I don't think he cares about the rules of nature's anyway. Alright. Uh. I guess. Save? Hey. Uh, sorry I took the the middle one from you there. I thought. That's like, fine. I don't mind. Swa swapping off is. Can I, good. can I click on anything here or no? Uh, the cat maybe? Boop, 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 no. boop, boop, I love that boop, your boop, most boop. prominent shirt is says slut. Slut! Right, Tuesday. To work. December 13th. Good evening. Ah! ah. Oh, yeah, you can take sure. him. Ah! Hey there, Jill. You do, Jill. Huh? Oh, hey, John. Well, you're no, the protagonist. She's more goth. She's more goth, I think. How, what, what's a good goth voice? When will you admit you have a John face, Gil? Uh, when will you admit you have a John face, Gil? When you let people call you Jules. Quiet. Are you okay? You look distracted. Where's boss? Dunno. She went out to buy some stuff and... Did you hear what I just told you? He said something? Yes, that you look distracted. Very, very distracted. It's nothing. I'm just thinking about stuff. God. What stuff? Well, I have to pay rent by the 30th, which is always stressful, and... Ah. It's also the fact that I spent a full hour yesterday apparently talking to myself. What's going on with that screen? God damn it. Not to mention the fact that two days ago, I found out the bar is at risk of closing. So not only is my life being shaken up, I'm apparently going crazy. Nice. On top of that, Neuter and Four left me with a completely empty wallet, and I'll get evicted if I miss my rent again. And there's all the beer cans around my apartment, and... Chill! Uh, sorry, did you say something? Can you really work today? Of course I can. Let's go through the basics then, shall we? Just in case. Dot dot dot. If you can make a piano man, I'll skip the rest, but bear with me for a second here, okay? Da, da, da. Let's start with the sugar rush. Look for the recipe using the navigation bar in the recipe book that will show up on the top left. You can also sort drinks by flavors like sweet or types like manly. Drag the desired amount of ingredients from their cells on the right to the shaker in the center. Gil. When done, press the mix button and then press it again to stop mixing. Click the serve button or the drink itself to serve it and that'll be all. Oh, but if the drink looks messed up, you'll need to press the reset button to try again. You can, either reset it at, you can press reset at any time, even while the shaker is moving. Don't be afraid to use it. Gil, I'm the one that went through the formal BTC instruction. Then this should be no problem. <sighs> uh, navigation Gil wants either bar. Sugar Rush or Fianna Man. Uh, 
Sugar Rush. Two Adelhide and one Powdered Delta with optional Carmatrine, all mixed. Sweet, girly, and happy. So two Adelhides, one Powdered Delta, and let's throw in the Carmatrine. Mix it up. So, so Carmatrine is basically alcohol. Ah, gotcha. What? How do I know when it's finished so, shaking? Uh, so the first shake is all you need for like a normal shake. And then when it gets like this, this is like a hard shake. You need to stop. Okay. So I don't think it needed a hard shake. There okay. You go. Boop. Here. No, that's you. Here. Happy now. A little, but not quite. Let's do one more. <sighs> I know, I know. Please humor me for a bit. Some drinks need to be blended. That's it. This is done by mixing it for over five seconds. You can tell it's being blended when the shaker starts moving faster. You also need to check if the drink should be served on the rocks or aged. Check ice and age buttons on the side to click select the one you need. And in case it wasn't obvious, on the rocks means you have to toggle the ice tab. It should be noted that the station will add the ice after mixing. It's not something you should mind, though. Just a fun fact. Dot, dot, dot. Give me a moon blast and I'll leave you alone. Keep in mind what I said. Yeah, yeah. Six Adelhide. One Powdered Delta, one Flanner Guide, and two Karma Trines. Don't remember the ice. All on the rocks and blended. Okay, yes. so the difference between blended and mixed. Gotcha. Wait until it starts to shake, shake, shaky. There you go. Boop. Here, did I amuse you for long enough? You did. Sorry to hold you. Let's get working. Yeah. Oh yeah, before I forget. Hmm? You can make any drink big by doubling the amount of ingredients. But if the recipe already has over 10 ingredients, the drink is already big. Oh, and if a recipe says it uses optional Karmatrine, that means you can use none or fill it to the brim. Damn. Optional Karmatrine doesn't count towards making a big drink, of course. Karmatrine is the alcoholic factor in a drink. It doesn't change the taste, but the amount still has an effect. And if you add too much of it, the client will get drunk faster, so please be mindful of that. Are you done with the exposition? Now I am. Yeah. This sounds like a game tutorial. Uh, hey, guys! Oh, ba ba eh? Uh, who, who's that? I don't know. I found her while I was out shopping. <laughs> Why bring her here? Well, it was either leave her outside at the mercy of society's finest, or bring her unconscious body in here. She's gonna make such a ruckus when she wakes up. You know that. That's for you to deal with. I'll be in my office. <laughs> Boss out! <laughs> Balls out. <laughs> you can't just push that responsibility onto us. We have work to do, damn it. There are two of you. Believe in yourselves. <sighs> do you think Chief knocked her out? Nah, that's unlikely. She'd be crowing about it or taunting us if that were the case. And it's not like her to pick on such a small girl. At least not unprovoked. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, you're right. We'll just need to keep it quiet. She seems to be just sleeping soundly, not comatose. Yeah. Okay then, time to start the night. Yeah, I'll start working while you go clean the bathroom. Um, come again? Well, you spent the whole weekend uh, and Monday doing God knows what, we've had some interesting clients come in. Dogs. <laughs> Lots of them. What? You're joking. Gil, you've known me for how long now? Do I look like the kind of woman who would make a joke like that? Well... So, as punishment for leaving me to deal with all of that on my lonesome, you'll be in charge of cleaning the bathrooms. Have fun. Just that? Fine, I see no problem. Where's the cleaning stuff? Here. You brought that from home, didn't you? That I did. 
fine. <laughs> With that out of the way, let's play some music on the new jukebox. This model needs to have all of its 12 slots filled with songs before it can start. Cool. This might take you a while. What was <laughs> what the logic behind it? What was the logic behind that decision? All right, so let's take a look at this. Oh, there's... Oh. Yeah. Okay, well, I already saw a song called Neo Avatar that sounds cool. Yeah, it's all right. Sure. Nah. Jim, cut this out. <laughs> Whoa, you don't want people getting behind your creative? No, they can listen to it later. It's just Jesus. All right, we're back. We got 12 songs. It just took Dave like uh, about an hour to go through each song. God, and it rate took them. so fucking long. Time to mix drinks and change lives. Hey, you, get me a beer. Oh, sure. Right on it. He wants a beer. He looks like quite the big guy, though. Bottle drinks. Nope. No. It is, yeah. Beer. Adelheid. Bronson. Powder Delta. Flanner Guide. Two, Two Flanner Guides. Guide. Two, three, four. So, before you start that, he looks like quite the big guy. Yeah, but I can't double it up. Because it's yeah. already overflowing. No. Try it. Oh. Okay. It's if it has over 10, you can't. You had 10. And then mix is just... Yeah. Jig jiggle beer. All right. Jiggle beer. Here you go. Yeah, this one's good. Pretty good, in fact. Nice job. Um... Thanks, I guess. You're lucky I was in a meeting close by. This hellhole would certainly use a presence like mine. Although, to be fair, work has taken me to worse hellholes, like New Jersey 3. Huh. What kind of work do you do, mister? You're talking to Donovan D. Dawson, chief editor and owner of the Augmented Eye. Nothing gets Dub published- Diddle Dome? <laughs> owner of the Dimsdale Dimmodome? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing gets published there without my blessings. They started with quite the interesting fellow, it seems. So you're the one to blame for the barrage of daily articles on Alice Rabbit, then? Hey, people love those articles. They love reading about that urban legend. Can you blame them? The idea of some wildcard hacker working for their own goals and nobody else's? That's the kind of corny shit that brings the clicks. From all kinds of people. And clicks bring money, and money brings nice stuff. Stuff like cars and houses and plastic surgery for the missus and her kids. Well, I'm not complaining about the fact that you write about the hacker. Just that you write about them every single day. And also, did you say plastic surgery for the kids? <laughs> some, of it is, some of it isn't even news, just speculation and copycats. I can't read your newspaper's daily feed without running into at least one article about Alice Rabbit. Well, first of all... I don't write about it, my interns do. The poor bastards think it'll help make them full-time employees. I'm just capitalizing on this topic while it's popular. And second, you're tired of one article about a supposed hacker, but not all the daily stories about the murders and other horrors? Well, I always filter out that section. I don't want to start my day scared and bitter. I have enough pressure and problems as is. I don't need to add which city's lovely citizens to the list. You're smarter than you look, kid. But if more people were like you, I'd go bankrupt from the lack of traffic. Still, maybe my job would be easier. How so? People get to sent to says People get bored of a certain kind of news after seeing it repeatedly. When I started in this job, it only took the news of some elderly woman being killed to guarantee clicks. Now you need an elderly woman carrying a sick baby boy getting hit by a truck. Death's not enough. They need a full sob story behind it. That's why I like those urban legends. They're easier to write about, and you can make up any shit you want. Spam them while they're hot, and even people like you, people who avoid the murder stories, will see them. That brings money, and like I said, money's good. 
Huh, I guess he has a point for a clickbait author. What about the opinion columns? Aren't those a good source of traffic too? Oh, I hate those brats. They just write about how they're better than everyone else. They might also write about how everyone who likes a certain something should be sodomized. The worst part about that is they know half our clicks come from them, so they get all diva-like on my ass. I think you're being too harsh. What about... Oh, wait. I was thinking of another newspaper. Yeah, the columnists in your page are annoying. <laughs> See? The kid on the restaurant critique column... Uh... Uh... Shit, forgot that Brett's name. Restaurant? I believe that's... That kid. Couldn't care less about his name. Anyway, his column is the least visited of the bunch. He gets less hits than the obituaries. However, he still insists that I keep paying for his adventures to outrageous restaurants. I wouldn't have any problem with that if he actually wrote about half of the places he visits. How so? He rarely writes about the places the newspaper sends him to. I've even heard he tries to get free meals by proclaiming that he's a food critic. Poor bastard only gets laughed at when he says that. Don't you remember some guy coming here asking for free drinks? Saying he was a critic or whatever? Did he look like a fat child with a really small face? No. Wasn't this one, then. Anyway, all this talk has made me thirsty. Try to give me a beer this time, please. Coming right up. Huh. Okay, so... I mean... Same thing, right? Should we yep. give him a smaller one, though? That's up to you. There's no wrong answers in this game, right? Right. In theory. I mean, he seemed to handle that one pretty well. So let's just get... I don't want to give him something he's not expecting. Mix it up and serve Oop. it up. Here. Here. Sorry. Ah, it's the big things that make life worthwhile. That's what she said. <laughs> what about big troubles in Little China? Did I stutter, kid? Right. So tell me, do you see many celebrities in this hellhole? Please stop referring to this place as a hellhole. If a place smells like soap and dog piss, I'm within my constitutional rights to call it a hellhole. <laughs> I'm doing my best here, thank you very much! Who is that? Nobody important. Hey, I heard that! Oh, sorry. Don't be offended by what I say, kid. I'm insulting the building, not you. You can think of it as a small hole in hell rather than a hellish hole, if you like. Charming. So, celebrities. Not really. At least not that I know of. Why? Well, to begin with, you have a serious VIP as a client, but I don't see you losing your shit. You're not making me feel special, honey. And second, because I'm always up for gossip regarding famous people. Especially the red carpet kind of things. Those folks people pretend to love but actually want to see fall from grace. Pretend to love? Fall from grace? Why do you think that gossip about famous people always sells? People pretend that they love celebs, what they really want is to see their idols torn down to their level. They want to see them suffer, to get their comeuppance for daring to be so much more successful than them. There's definitely an element of that. True. Nah, uh, I think gossip is just something everyone enjoys, but nobody wants to admit to enjoying. There's also that. Yeah, you thought wrong. And even if you were right, it wouldn't change the fact that people love that kind of stuff. They want to escape their lives by living somebody else's. Sadly, I failed to see the appeal in that whole thing. What do I care about? What do I care if this guy I saw in some random movie was wearing socks with sandals or if they're dating God knows who? I did socks with sandals is practically a public indecency, but still. I like to wear socks with sandals. I don't care what anybody thinks. It's a public indecency. Oh, please. As a bartender, I bet you have a strong voyeuristic streak. Your kind always loves to hear that stuff. Just like hairdressers. This sounds hypocritical coming from you. Uh, even if that's the case, I don't sensationalize what people do. I don't make it more than that person you know from TV acts like a human. Sensationalize is the key word here. Just the other day, I saw this committee judge bitching over what some girl was wearing to the store. 
No matter what you say, these people, people don't exist solely to entertain the public. But this problem exists because they're the ones constantly cultivating the idea that they're perfect and untouchable. Going to exotic locales, dressing in elegant ways, indulging in every luxury they can think of. All that just leaves the public craving for those little moments when they make a mistake and fall to their level. Can't say that's a lie, but sometimes the crowd just wants to see they're human. Hey, that dude that plays the nice guy is indeed a really nice guy. <laughs> to be fair, gossip articles don't help sensationalizing everything. It feels like they're instigating a behavior that shouldn't even be acknowledged in the first place. You like your big words, eh, Brett? Well, two can play that game of... Mm-hmm. Hey, 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 you're a bartender, right? No, I'm a lab rat hellbent on world conquest. Sarcasm wastes my time, my money, and your energy. Refrain from using it. That anyway. was a pinky in the brain reference. Yes, I'm, I understand that. Anyway, I just realized <laughs> that a bartender like you must have heard quite a few stories in her career. Talk about changing topics. Maybe. Why? Wouldn't you like a column talking about those? I bet they would sell quite well. It would be like that priest who published confessionary stories and they then got excommunicated, lynched. Yeah, priests shouldn't do that. It's Imagine very if bad. bartenders had like a bartender, you know, uh, confession, like confidant, legal thing. Jesus. People usually tell me all this stuff because they know I'm a simple bartender. Personal stranger of sorts. We could have you ghostwriting. Have our staff do that. They do? You don't really think Lana Smithy is just one person, do you? Figures. Uh, anyway. Eventually, the people from the stories would know it's them and blame me. Not only would that hurt us business, it would hurt me. I really like hearing clients rant about their lives. Oh, and it would hurt the clients too, I guess. <laughs> well, if you ever retire, that offer is waiting for you. Yeah, like you'll remember me two weeks from now. Sure. You want another drink, Mr. Donovan? Mr. Donovan. Mr. Donovan. Did, did I say something wrong? Not at all. I just really like the sound of that. Mr. Donovan. Mr. Donovan. Is it really that special? At work, everyone calls me Mr. Dawson or Boss. Boss is just a title. It's too impersonal and cold. It, it is? Mr. Dawson was my father and grandfather. It's too general, but Mr. Donovan, that's more like it. They're referring to me, to the man in front of them, not to my family, not to my position as boss, to me. Do you want your employees to get personal with you, Mr. Donovan? Ooh, that's illegal. Oh, gods, no. But I want them to fear me, not because I'm the boss or the name appearing on their paychecks. Rather, because I strike mortal dread into them. Starting tomorrow, I'm going to make everyone call me that. Oh, yeah. You were asking something. What was it? Drink. Another one? Do you? Ah, uh, yes, yes. You know what? Third time's the charm. Give me a beer. All right. This is actually taking quite a while. <laughs> <laughs> like, I wanted to do 20-minute episodes. I think that was 10 minutes ago. Well, there... cut it when you want. Is there an easier way to... What are these? They're just accents. What... Is there an easier way to, to drag these to the drink? No? no, you just drag them to the drink. Welcome Ooh. to the gameplay. Eight. Mix. Stop. Serve. Boom. One beer. Here's hoping I don't pass out. Cheers. Enjoy. Say, kid, does this bar have any investors? He didn't call it a hello? There was a bloke named... Oh, bloke. So I should be doing this in an accent. Yeah, don't worry about it. Some bloke named Sven who wanted to give us money if we stamped his face all over the place. But aside from that, no. 
these bars are pretty much like any fast food chain, so there's no local investors. Why? Just wanted to let you know how lucky you bastards are. <sighs> Excuse me. I'm drinking too much beer. Investors suck harder than my first wife. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> Those bastards think they're so important because they put their money in the company. Well, that's... I mean, you give me money so you can make more. Let me do my thing and I'll give you your money. But no, they have to stick their nose and start changing the silliest of stuff. What well, good is it to be the boss if you still have to work for someone else? You still have to answer to unions, the government, and those kind of organizations, don't you? Yeah, that's paperwork. I make somebody else do it and call it a day. These losers ask for meetings. They start talking about stuff they don't like, stuff they found offensive. And there's always that one guy or gal that says, Hey, why don't you do what that other newspaper does? Recently they told me that they needed more clicks. MORE CLICKS! I make sure to keep stuff spicy while still keeping production quality up, but it's never enough for them. Well, you know what? They want more clicks? I'll give them more clicks. I'll show them what happens when I do what they want and don't reject ideas. I don't know who the hell Donovan D. Dawson is. Doug Demodome, owner of the Dimsdale Demodome? <laughs> Should I be worried? <sighs> nah. At least he paid before starving off. I wonder what happened with Sven, though. Never heard from him again. Also, I'd like to point out that he paid $1,350 for three beers. That Those were big beers. Choo! Yes? What the hell happened in that bathroom? That kind of mess usually requires you to have thumbs. Crafty dogs, I tell ya. You'd think their short legs would hinder them. The, the ceiling, the sinks, the toilets, the vents! Shh, you'll make wake up Briar Rose over there. I won't forget this. Yeah, yeah. Oh, a client. Who we will meet next time on Character Select, because this episode has gone pretty long. So, this is basically what the game is, apparently. This is a game where the gameplay is just mixing drinks... And yep. the drinks that you mix influence what people say. Right. So this is more a story simulator. Drunk or not drunk? Give him we got one. We got Mr. Donovan fucking wasted on three beers. Fucking lightweight. So. He, I think he demands large beers. So. Oh, gotcha. All right. But I hope you guys are going to join us for this ride because I'm kind of interested in this. This is an interesting way of telling a story. So. Yeah. But, thank you very much for watching. Make sure to click that like button down below if you liked it. And third, this music's bumping. Yeah, it's a I bit like distracting. It. <laughs> <laughs>